This is Raw Narrative. Raw Narrative. Stories in the Raw. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to Raw Narrative, episode five. I am your host, Adriana, and I'm so excited to hang out with you guys today. We've had a lot of things happen here since the last podcast, so I'm going to fill you guys in on a few life updates. I am 28 years old now. What? (laughs) I literally found a gray, like a long gray hair, like the longest one I've ever found on my scalp (laughs) the other day, and I was like, man, I am aging (laughs) Well, I will say I did start like graying at age 17. So I I think it's like genetic, just little baby grays. But this one was like a big gray. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Yeah. And then my friends, okay, they're the best ever. Let me just say I have some of the best friends and they invited me to a Christmas party. Okay. And I had a lot going on, a lot of editing, just a lot of things happening, prepping for other things, holidays, and I was super tired and I was totally going to bail going to this Christmas party. And well, I will say I got the dates mixed up. I thought it was like last Saturday, but it was actually Friday and my friend called me like on Friday afternoon and she was like, Hey, you're coming tonight. Right. And I was like, I don't know. I'm kind of like feeling antisocial. I don't know if I really want to go, you know, I'm just tired. And she was like, Adriana, like, please come. I think it would be a great time to have you. And it's just going to be relaxed just us girls. And I was like, Oh, fine. And then like, I thought it was Saturday. So I was like in the mindset of like doing nothing on Friday. And so I like texted my friend who was hosting the party and I was like, Hey, I'm running a few minutes late. Like I had literally been editing like all day, just trying to get caught up before the holidays. Cause I wanted some time off. And so I was exhausted <laughs> And I had not had a shower yet that day. I literally like woke up, brushed my teeth and started like editing and like trying to get stuff done. So I had to hop in the shower and then like I had like the stinkiest attitude, just like, oh, I'm just, I know I'm going to have fun. Like, have you guys ever been that way? Like, you know, you're going to have fun if you actually go. But like the hardest part is like getting ready, getting out the door and like driving there. But then when you're, once you're there, you know, you're going to have like the best time. So that's like, that was my flow. So got in the car, whatever, drove. And then when I got there, I opened the door and all my friends were there and they're like, she's coming, she's coming, she's coming. And they held up their little iPhones and everyone was like, surprise. And I was like, oh my gosh, you guys threw me a surprise party. What? And I was like, I felt so bad because my friend who had called me, you know, to like verify that I was still coming to this quote unquote Christmas party. I just felt so bad because I literally just threw up all over her just being like, you know, saying, (laughs) I don't want to go. And I felt so bad. I was like, you guys are so thoughtful. And she was like, yeah, we've been planning this since like September. And I was like, oh, what? Yeah. But we had the best time. She had like, if you know me, I'm a plant lover. Like look behind me. I've got like the cute little plant portrait and my office is full of plants. <laughs> so she, and I love like cactus or cacti or whatever, and like desert plants. And I love Hoyas. Hoyas are like my favorites. And then like philodendrons, like I love all types of plants and like monsteras, but they made it like a fiesta theme. And they got, if you're like, if you're from Charlotte or like surrounding area, you know, Viva chicken, like Viva chicken is the best and they catered in like viva chicken food it's like a peruvian style like quick service type food 
not fast food, but like quick service, if you guys know what I mean by that. Kind of like Panera style, but Peruvian food <laughs> is how I can kind of paint that if you've never had Viva Chicken. Super good. And they have like all these delicious sauces. So we did that and like ate some great food. We got our grub on. And let me tell you, I was hungry. I was like hangry. And so, and she had like these um, cupcakes done up in like a cactus, like a pull apart cake with like a cute cactus. It was so cute. And we played like a fun, you know, that like Christmas game where you wrap up gifts and like cellophane, I think it is. And then like, you have to like unwrap them in with mittens on. And then you like, whatever you unwrap, you get to keep. We played that game and they had like the most precious gifts for me. It was wonderful. So it was really appreciative. So that was really fun. <laughs> that was like something that I was like such an Adriana moment, like working something up in my mind. And then when I'm there, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the best thing ever. And it was a surprise party for me. It wasn't even a Christmas party. So I felt really bad. <laughs> but the girls are like the sweetest. I've, so many of my friends came out. So that was such a fun time. I think earlier that week, we had a really bad storm come through. And if you've seen my lot, like, I don't know, like videos of sometimes I'll post like videos on my stories of like my dogs in the backyard. But in our backyard, we have a lot of trees and then we have like a lot of green space as well. And a tree fell and luckily it didn't fall on our house, but it fell and like another tree caught it. So it was like leaning up against another tree and that tree started bending and we were like, oh my gosh, we need to get someone out here to like cut down this tree. <laughs> Tyler, my husband, he found a company or I don't know, recommendation to have some crew come out and like look at the trees and like take care of them for us. And then they found like another dead tree. So we had that one taken down <laughs> and Tyler was like, yeah, just leave the trees. Like if you guys can slice them up in like tiny chunks, we're going to use it as firewood. So Tyler went and got an ax last night <laughs> at Harbor Freight <laughs> and he was so proud of this ax. Okay. So he wanted to chop wood in the dark last night. I was like, no, we're not doing that. So instead we went and drove around and looked at Christmas lights, which I think that's, that was a better trade-off. And then like first thing this morning, he was like, I'm going to chop firewood. And so he was Mr. Lumberjack <laughs> this morning, just like cutting wood for a few hours. So that was great. And then we're going to use that for our, well, I guess today's the first day of winter. So December 21st. It's the day I'm filming this. So happy winter. So we'll use that for like, we have a fireplace inside, like a wood burning fireplace. And then we got a brand new fire pit, like that doesn't blow smoke in your face. So, um, I'm really excited about that. So he's like work. He's like so excited to like set that whole scene up for us tonight. And like, we have some new chairs to like sit by the fireplace. So I'm super stoked about that. So <laughs> that was um, really fun. Oh, and then I was gifted for Christmas and early Christmas. My in-laws came and like, well, what's funny is like I told Tyler, I sent him like this link and like months ago and I was like, hey, babe, like, by the way, this would be like a fun gift idea for me. Wink, wink, you know, whatever. And so like, I guess his parents had asked like, Hey, do you know, like anything Adriana's wanting for like Christmas or birthday for me? I'm always wanting like anything that I could use for photography or whatever fun add ons most of the time. And so he was like, yeah, let me send you this link. And what I had sent him was a vintage, like restored Polaroid camera. And I want to use it to like, just spoil my engagement and my engagement and wedding clients. So I'm really excited. And if you're watching on YouTube, here she is. Look how pretty. I'm going to open it up. Oh, this way. So pretty. Um, by vintage, it's like 80s, 90s. <laughs> but I'm really excited. And I got the idea from my best friend because my best friend, Madison, 
she got one of these vintage ones because she travels a ton. She's like always in Hawaii or always in Europe or always somewhere on an adventure. And she takes Polaroids like almost everywhere she goes. So I was like, I need to do this for my clients. So thank you, Madison, for the recommendation. I need to name her. I don't know if you guys have any like name suggestions. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I'm kind of funny. Like I'm like, oh, let me name my plants or let me name. I haven't named my cameras though, which is funny. I think they are like my babies. <laughs> so I guess they all deserve names. I should think about like a name list for my cameras. But that was a fun thing. I'm trying to think what else we had going on. Oh yeah, we're we're gonna have like a friends miss, <laughs> I guess. So like a friends Christmas, like Christmas spent with friends after you spend Christmas with your family or whatever. So we're doing that like after the ho- the traditional holidays, and we're playing like Dirty Santa which is like white elephant, like stealing gifts <laughs> kind of thing. But instead of like the white elephant, it's we're going to do like good gifts. So not like gag gifts. And we're going to wear like ugly sweaters. So I'm excited about that. So those are kind of like a few of my life updates. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to all those fun adventures coming. And then I know I've told you guys, but I'm having my pop-up. It's date night on the rooftop, December 31st, and it's $99 for at least eight images, so eight digital images edited high res, and it's a rooftop session in the city, and it's going to be the best thing ever. So, I would love for you guys to join. You can book on Instagram. There's a link on my stories where you can go in and just pick your time slot. So love that. So hope you guys can join us for that. But today I want to talk about as a bride or a groom, as a couple, like how you can have the best photos and like what you can do to help your photographer have the best photos and like have the best outcome. And a lot of times we have these like, and I know for myself too, like I love having my photos taken with my husband and like booking a photographer. And we have like this vision in our minds of this is what I want where I saw this photo on Pinterest. You download the image and then you like text it to your photographer and you're like, this is what I want. Make me look like this. Right. And we have like this vision in our mind, but like we have to remember that everyone is their own individual. And there's a lot of components that come together and come into play when we are trying to have this whimsical outcome, right. Of like, Oh, like, These are my dream photos, my dream, like whatever, right? But then you might have like this venue picked out and it matches nothing that looks like the pictures, right? Today, I want to talk to you guys about three things that your photographer uses and needs your help with to create your dream photos, okay? There are three elements really that really come into play when we are photographing a session. If that's an engagement session, if that's a family session, maternity, wedding, like whatever type of session that you're dreaming of, there are elements that come into play to have that outcome, right? And as a photographer, It is my job to communicate what I need from my couples and my clients, right? So I just want to give you guys some tips and tricks to what you can start thinking about in order to have like those dream photos that you've been wanting, like the ones you've been highlighting on your Pinterest board and like saving forever or what you're seeing on Instagram. Like there is a science (laughs) <laughs> to achieving the dream look. Okay. For one, 
Let's talk about outfits. Okay, I'm super excited to talk to you guys about this because outfits are a huge part of what your image looks like, okay? I want you to understand this. Like, I'm gonna paint the whole picture as a photographer, why your outfit selection is so important, okay? Especially colors and patterns and like how it all works together in the light. It's like a science, okay? You probably wouldn't know like where to even begin if you've never had your photos taken, right? Because sometimes you'll come to a session, you're like, I've never booked a photographer before. I've never had professional photos done before. I just saw this photo and this is what I want. Okay, let's start there. For one, let's say this photo is kind of like a warm toned photo. The subjects look super crisp. They're laughing. They look natural. And let's say it's like one of like an, an engagement session and it's outside in a field with rolling hills behind and it's just vibrant and just sharp and crisp and timeless looking, right? And everything looks so creamy. All the colors look creamy. They look beautiful. The skin tones look beautiful. Okay. Yes. There's a lot that goes into like the post-production part, like editing process. And there's a lot that goes into like capturing the raw image in the lens and like the photographer having to use the the three main elements oh I should say four because shooting Kelvin too like when you're shooting in Kelvin that's like another element but you're using like your your shutter your ISO and your f-stop and then like Kelvin like those are like the four elements that I am constantly changing throughout a session like when you're shooting on manual you're having to change your settings based on the lighting and location and things like that okay so yes there's that element but let's talk about how like your outfits impact that photo right like and let's say like the couples in the photo it's just like super candid looking and like cute awesome love it we can do that okay but like what are they wearing <laughs> So let's talk about that. A lot of times you have to remember that what you're wearing, especially the colors that you're wearing, the light literally reflects off of your clothing into my lens. Okay. Think about that. Okay. So that impacts how my edits are being applied to the raw image. Mind blown. Right. So have you ever thought of it like that? Like, it's almost like, think about, have you ever seen like a stained glass window at a beautiful church? And when the light shines in through, like sometimes you can see like sun rays reflecting different colors, right? Like you could see like maybe the sun ray looks red or it can look green or it could, it, like passing through light, right? So a lot of times like I'm wearing this, green shirt right but if I had the sun shining like if I'm backlit and like it will it's illuminating me and the my camera is picking up all the colors through the light right so it all works together and that's why it's so important to talk to your photographer or like ask your photographer like hey like what do you think about these things and here's the thing I love colors okay I'm not against someone wearing a pop of color, right? It's awesome. But let's paint the picture of like, if you're looking for something timeless and something that focuses primarily on you, right? Or you guys as a couple, we are wanting to make sure that everything comes together, right? And, and don't get me wrong, there's a lot that we can do like post-production but it all comes together. Okay. So let's say I'm wearing like, cause right now I'm wearing a green shirt. Okay. For Christmas. Love it. <laughs> let's say I'm wearing green. Okay. If I want to wear green to my session, that's awesome. Let's do it. Okay. Let's say it's spring and I'm wearing green <laughs> and I'm wanting like photos in the field. And then I put my husband 
in green as well because I want to be matchy matchy with him. Y'all are just, <laughs> we're going to look lost <laughs> in the field. You have to think about contrasts and highlights too because if I'm wearing green, it would be like me wearing green in front of a green screen, okay? You wouldn't be able to see me and it's not highlighting me at all, right? So like keep that in mind as well because like you want the colors to complement each other. But what if I'm wearing green on top of a rooftop, right? And everything behind me is like slate gray or white. It's going to pop because you're going to be the contrast and everything behind you is highlight. But if you have so much going on with like wanting to put your husband in green and if I was going to put my husband in green and me in green, it, it would be so busy. So if someone's going to, if you're going to do a pop of color, my recommendation would be have a pop of color, love it, and then neutralize everyone else, earth tones, incorporate all the neutrals to mix it in. So that way it's not so heavy and potent with all that color where it takes away from the story of the image. So that would be like one of my greatest recommendations. Okay. So if you're going to have a pop of color, which I love, I'm all about color. Okay. Have like a couple little pops. You could either have everyone wear like neutrals or earth tones because those photographs so well, you have to think about how the sun hits a neutral color. It just looks pretty. I don't, it just looks good. It photographs well, like how the sun when the sun hits those colors and they enter into my camera body, it just, it looks great in neutrals. You look great. Okay. You can't go wrong wearing neutrals. Now I would say like have one person wear that pop of color and then put the other individual, or if it's a family session, put everyone else in like neutrals. Okay. Solids are awesome. You cannot go wrong with just throwing everybody in solids and mi mixing and matching like different textures. So you could do like denim and corduroy or like linen or whatever season you're in, you know, kind of go there. Like you can do like those cute like fleece jackets in the fall and have someone else like in corduroy, like see where I'm going with this or like have a solid like velvet dress and then like have the other individual in like a different texture, but you guys are wearing solids. Okay. That would be one of my greatest recommendations. Now, when we talk about pattern, I like pattern. Okay. But remember like solids, they like, think about what you're going to be wearing. If you're going to display this in your home, think about, is this going to match your home too? Because your outfits, a lot of times you guys are going to want to print out your photos and have them like displayed in your home, right? Is this going to match what you've, you've got going on with your home decor too? See, that's why I love neutrals. They're timeless. They match like everything, no matter what you have going on in your home. Okay. That would be something to, you know, keep in mind. Yeah. So if you're doing pattern, be sure to only have one individual wear a pattern. You don't want someone in polka dots and then somebody in plaid and then someone in stripes. You see where I'm going with this? Like it's better to be like, okay, if you love plaid, that's great. These are your photos. I want you to love them. So wear what you're comfortable wearing. Be you. Don't try to be someone else you're not. But if you're going to be wearing plaid, have like the other person wear a solid and then mix and match in the textures and stuff too. You know what I'm saying? Don't be putting like everybody in plaid or everybody like <laughs> I mean you could but I I personally don't think that photographs well that's just my opinion as a photographer I think if you have a pattern just make sure there's one person wearing that pattern and then because it just gets so busy like for instance here's a pattern that I love right now I love checkers okay I love checkered print it's super cute it's super trendy right now I have a really cute like checkered sweater. I love it. It's cute. But 
am I going to put myself in a checkered sweater and then get a photo of my husband in a checkered sweater? Like both of us in matching. Like I really don't think that would photograph well, although I love checkers. <laughs> so I would put him in like a solid. Okay. Or yeah, definitely a solid. And like, I would put him in a neutral. That's what I would do. Okay. So outfits, keep that in mind. Think about how the light reflects off the colors, neutrals and earth tones photograph super well. If you want to add a pop of color, I love color, add a pop of color, maybe in however you want to do that. If it's like a cute jacket or a jacket or just like a, uh, let's see, pair of boots or a pair of shoes or maybe your earrings have a pop of color, but make sure it's not like everybody is like wearing all these different types of pops of color. Does that make sense? I'm trying to like paint. I, you want a clean image, something classic, right? Something that can last and like you'll be proud of these photos for years to come because I love trends. Don't get me wrong, but I think you guys have made, you know, you're making a good investment and it's important to like, to make sure your investment that's is going to be something that you're going to like in the future as well. Okay. Cause you're going to be looking back at these like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Right. That's the point of like having photos, like having your photos taken. These are moments that you can capture today to last forever. Okay. So outfits. Number two is location. Okay. Location. Okay. What do I mean by location? That is where we are having our photos taken, okay? If we're talking about a wedding, let's say I have a couple come to me, right? And they show me a photo in my portfolio of like a couple on a mountain, right? We'll keep that same like idea going. All of these rolling hills and, you know, all those things together, okay? And then let's say that it was like an elopement or something like that on, on a mountain. And then I ask where your venue is going to be. And then you tell me that you're going to be getting married like at a beautiful venue, but it's like a barn venue. Okay. That's awesome. I think they're super cute. They're super trendy. I love them especially in the Carolinas, the barn venues are super popular and they're adorable. Okay. I love a good barn venue. But if I have a client that shows me photos of like the mountains and then you're getting married on like a flat, <laughs> like no hills, no mountains, right? And it's going to be like a covered pavilion barn. Your photos are going to look like you got married in a barn. They're not going to look like you got married on a mountain because you didn't get married on a mountain. You wanted a barn, right? So like make sure you have realistic expectations with your photographer to know like, okay, this is where we're having the wedding. This is what my photos are going to look like. Okay. And you know, if you're wanting both like over here as your photographer, like I, I'm happy to be like, Hey, let's go. And like, if you want to book another session and go do like bride and groom portraits, like after you get married, like put the gown back on, put the tux back on and let's go with, you know, go to a mountain. I am all about that. <laughs> but you know, I think it's good to like, think about these things before you book your venue. Okay. Make sure it's what you're really wanting. Okay. Because your photos are literally your venue. Okay, keep that in mind. And remember we talked about colors and light? That has so much to do with photography, okay? So when we are talking about um, like even a reception, right? And let's say you wanted an indoor reception. Like what is around you in your, like, what does it look like inside of the reception hall? Like that's why it's important to tour these places. If it's a lot of natural wood tones, it's important to be realistic of, okay, there's wood all around me when my photographer's photographing, 
it's going to look like a rustic vibe. Okay. That's what your photos are going to look like. Now, if your venue is like all white inside, like, do you see my, this room that I'm in? It's literally like all white. But if I were to go to my downstairs, I have like, it's darker down there. Like this is a South facing window. My office is a South facing window, which is like the most amount of light you could possibly have in your home. Right beneath me is my front room. And I have a South facing window, a huge window in there. Right. But my walls, I have like this deep blue accent wall. It doesn't reflect the light off of that accent wall like it does in my office, but it's the sun is hitting in at the same direction. Okay. So like it's way dimmer downstairs in my front room because the walls are not like how they are in here. I have like a white ceiling, white ever. And so light reflects off of bright surfaces beautifully. Okay. So keep that in mind. That's why photographers love when the clients wear neutrals. Okay. Cause everything like light is everything. Okay. Literally like, mwah, like chef's kiss. Okay. Good light is better than like the most beautiful location ever. Literally. Okay. So keep that in mind that like when you're looking for your venue, like I'm educating you like that way, you know, like what is my photographer looking for? What is my photographer thinking? Like look at your surroundings. You need to be looking for like good light. Okay. Keep that in mind. Now, if you love that rustic look, I'm all about it. Okay. Like I want my clients to have their dream photos, not my dream photos, their dream photos. So I want you guys to have your dream photos. Okay. I'm just painting a picture of like good light. Okay. That's just an example. Now let's talk about what if, okay, here's another scenario. Let's say we do get married on a mountain, okay? Let's say it's in the middle of summer on a mountain in July and you are very adamant that you want to get married at one o'clock on a mountain in July. We can do it, but I can't guarantee that the light is going to look and this is going to kind of get us right into lighting, okay? I can't guarantee that your pictures are going to turn out the way you envision them with like the mountains. Okay, let me tell you why. Lighting is the other key element. It's like chef's kiss, like I said. Like good lighting is everything. We love natural light, okay? And I don't get me wrong, I love a good flash too, okay? I'm all about these trendy flash photos right now literally obsessed with them right now. And, and the good, like, I love these trends, the blurry photos, the flash photos, love a good trend. Okay. I'm all about it. And I'm capturing these trends. But when we are shooting, let's say there's no coverage, literally an open, like field, like on a mountain or something, whatever. And like direct sunlight is hitting in there's no like backlight, but it's like literally on top of us. We can like try our best, but like your mountains might look a little bit blown out. I mean, there's ways that we can angle, you know, and to like make sure we can try to like backlight the couple, like backlight you guys. <laughs> I'm trying to picture this because I want you to understand like you have to talk to your photographer about timing, okay? And like lighting and the time of day. Don't get me wrong, like we can work around this, right? But like if we're wanting like those glowy photos where it's like you can see the mountains and the landscape and it's just glowy and beautiful, you're going to want like first thing in the morning, sunrise or like right before the sun is setting. Like it's just... I mean, different photographers have different opinions. I'm sharing my opinion, okay? In my opinion, you can't guarantee like cloud coverage, right? Because what if it's like a literally beautiful, like beautiful sunny day? Okay, that's great. I love a good sun and I love like bright, vibrant photos. Like I'm all about it. 
but like, I hate sunspots. Like I cannot deal with sunspots. Okay. So yes, we want to like try to angle our clients in a certain direction to avoid sunspots, but yet like your photo is not going to look like what you see consistently, like as like these glowy photos on a photographer's feed normally. Like typically you see like these consistent, like glowy, nice, or like well evenly lit photos. That's like the time of day that we're shooting, right? Or if it's like cloudy, like normally in the winter, it's pretty cloudy, right? So sometimes we can get away with like shooting midday due to like the snow clouds or like the puffy clouds that come by in the winter because it is like rainy season. But if we're shooting like in the spring, in the fall, and the light is just crazy lighting, just be realistic and know like, hey, this is, if that's what you guys wanted, like I would be like, yeah, like go for it. Like if that's what you want, but you need to know you could have sunspots on your face. If you like that, that's great. Like photography is an art, so... I'm not trying to say there's one right way to do things or wrong way to do things, but in my opinion, for what I think looks good is like even lighting, avoiding sunspots on the face. (laughs) And that's something that you need to keep in mind with your venue because with the time of your wedding and if your venue, if you want to get married at this specific spot, like at your venue outside, but like if the venue did not design (laughs) the placement of the ceremony to be like in connection with the sun, like in the sunset, like if it's direct sun hitting you, like there's nothing you can do about that. Like there's all different shooting scenarios and you just got to roll with it. I know like a lot of photographers have to deal with that where it's just direct sunlight, no cloud coverage. The venue is just set up where poor designing for where they put the main spot for the ceremony, like how they're advertising it or modeling it to the client. And that's what the client ended up going with. You know, there's nothing you can do about that. You just got to make it happen. But that's something that you need to like ask your venue too about is like, Hey, like, my photographer was trying to educate me about lighting and I want to make sure like what direction does the sun set, you know, is there, are there going to be sunspots? So maybe go like, look at it like during, like go tour your venue with like a realistic time of like what the light would look like and see like, Oh, like if we're getting married outside and this is where we're getting married, how does the sun hit? <laughs> That's how your photos, a lot of times, if there's sunspots everywhere, you know, unless you're like stepping into a moment of shade, you know, your photographer is going to try to like, you know, grab that where it's like awesome, but there's nothing you can do. You can't control the sun, right? Let's prepare. Let's think ahead and let's be realistic of what our photos will look like. So consult your photographer, consult ask questions, text them, show them photos, like take a video, show them photos, ask their opinion. And a lot of times, you know, you guys are booking your venue before the photographer. Okay. That's great. Like, I think you definitely should book your venue and have that in place to book your date before you book the rest of your vendors. That should be like where you want to go with that. But like, let's say there's a photographer that you're like wanting to use and you're a hundred percent like on wanting to use them, then like, yeah, like maybe ask, say like, Hey, we really want to book you, but we're booking our venue first. Can you give us like your opinion on this? Or what do you think for like the type of photos that you produce? Will this venue like produce similar results to the ones I'm like in love with? Okay. So those are some good questions to ask your photographer. Y'all can always ask me any questions. You can always DM me, ask me questions. Um, I'm always here for my clients. So my clients have my number. I'm always texting back and forth with my brides. Like, shoot me questions. Um, Yeah. So 
hopefully these little tips will help you guys with just thinking ahead and planning. And I hope these will help you guys help your photographer capture the most epic photos ever. So I hope you guys have a Merry Christmas. Christmas is going to be, I think, on Monday, right? We're Today's the 21st, so we're just a few days away. But um, I hope you guys have an awesome holiday and be safe out there and enjoy your families and get lots of rest. <laughs> we'll talk to y'all later. Toodles. This is Raw Narrative. Raw Narrative. Stories in the Rough.